What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Dylan from Redneck Tuners, and we're back with another video today. Uh, something a little new for me, and hopefully helpful for you guys. Um, I've searched all over the internet. Um, there's bits and pieces here, and I'm gonna try to combine all the knowledge into one video. Hopefully this will help you guys out, um, and also hopefully this will work for me in my case. So today I'm gonna be deleting the EGR on my 240. Um, I have a 91, so it's the dual cam. Uh, I believe it will be a similar process for the S14 dual cam. I know there's a couple differences in vacuum lines and things like that, but uh, it should be a similar process. Um, like I said, there are videos online about it. I just feel like there aren't as many for people who are trying to do it, one, while it's in the car, and two, while um, are trying to do it without like a welder and things like that. So I'm gonna show you the parts that I got so I can do it without a welder, and then I'm gonna show you what my uh, thought process is gonna be. All right, for starters, we have the actual squid plate, I believe is what they call it, it looks like a squid. Um, this is the block off kit from Circuit Sports. Uh, they do make an ISR kit, and I believe they make a um, P, or what is it, P2M as well, uh, but those were actually completely on back order, um, and they weren't gonna be back for at least eight weeks. So I thought, oh, I'll give Circuit Sports a try. I mean, how hard is it to really mess up a flat plate and a gasket and a couple of bowls. So I'm gonna try that. It's a good deal. I'll list that in the description as well. Um, secondly, we have our OEM Nissan gas or the uh, manifold block off bolt. So these comes with, come in the cars that have, uh, are not California cars that have no EGR system. Um, this comes and fills that, that hole on your exhaust manifold. And this is the part number. Um, you can buy it on Z1, and I believe you can still get it from Nissan Parts and a couple dealers and things like that. So that's good news. I also have another OEM part. This is a coolant temp sensor, um, and this is the part number for that. I did put a new one on recently, but it wasn't OEM. I didn't know they still made these, so um, I'll explain why I got this in a little bit, but this is a new part. Um, <clears throat> I also got the great RTV to help seal this because this paper gasket isn't all that great. Um, none of them really are, so we're going to use this to seal it. And last but not least, if you're not taking the manifold out, you will be blocking off some of the uh, vacuum line ports. So I got a couple different things. I don't know if they're all going to work, but a couple basic caps here, assorted mix. Um, so that should be that. And as far as tools go, um, for the exhaust bolt, you're gonna need a 24 millimeter wrench. It is a kind of an odd size um, and it's really big. So a lot of the kits that you buy do not have them. If you have one, great. If not, I had to go purchase one. It's super annoying, they're pretty expensive, but uh, this will help you in the long run and not have to mess with vice grips or adjustable wrenches. So get a 24 and also get some penetrant of some sort. You can do PV Blaster or WD-40 like I have here um, to help you not, you know, have that bolt give you any issues because this is gonna be the toughest part of the um, EGR delete is getting that bolt off of the exhaust. And I'll show you why, um, but the two things you're gonna need for that are going to be your wrench and your penetrant. And obviously you're gonna need sockets and swivels for this part and I can show you what we do there. So if you follow me into this side of the engine bay, we have the exhaust and this tubing right here is your EGR um, tube that goes runs behind the block into the actual um, solenoid over there and it runs right into your exhaust manifold. This is where the 24 millimeter wrench is gonna sit. If you can see that down there. Um, and you're gonna wanna soak in here with that penetrant. Let it sit, do a couple coats if you need to because this is gonna be basically rust welded on there because of the heat cycles. Um, and if you have never taken this off, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a pain. And just looking at it, I already see that mine is in fact cracked there. And I didn't really notice that before. But that could be giving me all sorts of issues, um, and that's why we're going to delete it. So, let's get the video cut out, but uh, let's get into it. Um, we're going to start by taking this bolt off. Um, it's best to do it that way because if you can't get this off and your car still runs and drives, you don't want to have all this stuff off and not able to get your bolt off. So, let's start here. All right, so if you are lucky um, and you spray enough penetrant and you have the right wrench and not messing around with pressing wrenches, this tube actually comes off relatively not once easy but it comes off uh, mine is loose right now i believe i can actually turn it by hand um but the goal is to completely remove this out of the um, exhaust and then we'll work on the next side so i'm gonna get doing that because it's pretty difficult um to do with one hand so yeah get this thing all the way out try your best sometimes it is tough mine was stuck but um with this wrench and the uh penetrant it worked out great so i recommend that highly so as you can see in there 
we have the threads completely out. I, be, I did pull the hose it back a little bit, like toward the firewall. Oops, drum wrench. Um, so that I could separate it, um, but that leaves us room to now work on the fun side. So once this is off, we're gonna move over to getting the rest of the components off, and I'll show you how to do that. Now that we're on the intake side, uh, this is where having big hands is really going to, uh, it's really gonna hurt. Um, it's not gonna be fun. So for starters, we're gonna take off the brake booster vacuum line, um, which is a 10 mil right here. Um, and we're also gonna take the, uh, excuse me, the fuel rail feed line to the pressure regulator off just so you can kind of move and finagle around there. Um, if you're feeling up to it, you can take the whole rail off to get it out of your way. Um, we'll see if I need that, I'll decide in a minute. For now, we are going to take this bolt off, this one off, and then we're gonna work at these two 12 mils right here on the top of this solenoid. So let's get those out of there. So we got this bolt removed, this one removed, as well as you should have 12 or two 12s. I only have one because I've messed with this and I actually lost that bolt. Um, but you can move this brake booster line out of the way. You can fully disconnect it as well and pull it up. Um, but what you're gonna try to do is get this whole solenoid out and these vacuum lines are gonna come out. All of them are gonna come out and I'll show you which ones need to stay. Um, but just basically get this all out of here. Um, it's kinda hard to do with one hand. Remove these two lines and there is one line under this that feeds into the actual valve here. So we are going to take this off, remove that, and then I'm gonna show you how to get to this valve. All right, we got this solenoid out here. I don't. I think it's called a BPT valve, I believe. Um, we got that out. You're gonna have that vacuum hose that was sitting on the bottom of this, and then you're gonna have some other strays. There's a lot of them back there. Like I said, I'm gonna. A lot of them are gonna come out. I'm gonna show you exactly which ones. Uh, but if you see down there, there's that little T off that uh, feeds into the back plate here, which we are going to remove. That one that's behind the head, and then also it feeds into the fuel pressure regulator and the BPT valve. So we're gonna remove those. Um, next step here is to remove this whole valve here. So we're gonna start with this bolt here. I believe it's a 12. Um, I'm gonna make sure on that, but you're gonna need an open-ended for this side because there's the socket won't fit in here. And then there's that bolt there for it. Let me see if I can zoom in and show you. That bolt there, um, I believe another 12. That you should be able to hit with a straight shot with an extension. And then that one down there to the left. And that one I believe we're gonna need a swivel for, or we're gonna have to work at it with our hands. Uh, but there are three bolts and that is where the squid plate goes so we're going to pull those out um it's going to be a little bit of finesse we're going to pull those out and then i can show you where we're going to cap off lines and reverse where we're going to take things off so let's get this off all right so i did get all three of those bolts out um this one was the biggest pain the one to the left like i said use a swivel and an extension um, and it should come out now the whole valve is loose and since we pulled the exhaust off this should be free just like that um, it's going to take some finagling. I'm going to try to get it off um, and kind of slide it out toward me and the whole pipe as well. Um, that way we can get this all the way out and I can show you what to do next. So I'm going to get this out of there and then yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, we got the EGR valve and the hose all out in one piece. Um, trying to get you a good view here, but there is a ridiculous amount of carbon buildup in there um, as well as down the hatch here can't really see because of the sunlight I, I can't really show you but there's a lot and let's get a better look at this crack here so that is going to be creating a, an exhaust leak as well as i don't really know too much about the science of it but if there's a crack here this feeds the egr i'm sure that's some sort of vacuum leak probably not running good i don't know correct me if i'm wrong in the comments but um not not good and not to mention two of the three bolts on this actual plate here were completely loose so probably wasn't holding good vacuum mixed with all the other problems and the buildup of carbon um, it's just not a good sign so let's get to the next part so now that we have this base cleared up um, you can see the hole here where the excuse me where the squid plate is going to go um, you're going to want to try to clean this up with, as much as you can um, while covering up that hole i'm going to take some maybe one of those little abrasive brushes probably but i'm going to cover the hole while i do that um, kind of get these contacts as cleaned up as possible but our next mission is, I'm gonna try to get a picture. Uh, if I can't, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna try to post a picture up if I do have one. But on the back of the head here and the block, there is an entire plate of vacuum mess. And like I said, I am gonna try to get a picture, um, but there are three bolts, I believe, that hold this entire plate in. And we're gonna be deleting that. That's all vacuum lines. Um, 
and if you're deleting EGR, you can just leave it, but I'd rather just get it out of the way, make more space, because I'm really liking all this room here now. Um, all of the stuff that I've replaced in the past would have been so much easier without this. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get a good method here, and I'll report back to you guys. Also a quick note, we're only gonna need three important vacuum lines. Um, that is gonna be this one right here. This is the brake booster vacuum line. Um, we're gonna need one to the fuel pressure regulator, which is right here. Um, and the way I'm gonna run it is the long vacuum hose that tags into here on your um, intake manifold. I'm gonna reroute that from here to the fuel pressure regulator. Last but not least, this is the idle air control valve vacuum line. It runs all the way under here up to the front. Um, but that is the only line you need to keep there. So just to go over brake booster here, this guy, fuel pressure regulator is going to run all the way up to here and you already have the idle air control valve. We're not messing with that. So we're going to leave that on. All right. So unfortunately my EGR system has been tampered with. Um, so I did have one bolt on this side and it looks like I don't have any other ones. So there should be three total. Like I said, um, if your car is untouched, there should be three. There are two harness plugs here one on this side and one on this side unplug those and the entire plate will slide out all right so this is what the back egr plate looks like like i said two harness points up there and three holes for bolts mine unfortunately only had one in it uh, made my life easier but that really sucks uh, because somebody was tampering with this uh, before me and it definitely wasn't me because i was trying to keep the egr intact so somebody had messed up with this previously um, and i don't appreciate that so Anyways, we're gonna jump into finishing getting rid of this stuff. I'm gonna keep all this just in case I don't ever wanna put this stuff back on. I doubt it, but just in case, it's not a bad idea to keep things like this. All right, so I have completely removed all the vacuum lines from behind the block here um, and everything under. So the ones that I have to cap off are one, two, and then there's a third one under here, right directly under it. Those are all gonna be capped off. Or like I said, if you take the manifold off, you can take these parts out. Same thing with this butterfly valve here. You can take these out. Uh, a lot of people recommend to take the entire manifold out. Uh, I didn't want to do that, maybe later, but for now I'm just gonna leave it. And there is a hose line that comes off here under the butterfly valve that we're also gonna cap off. I don't think you have to, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Um, I would give it a shot. I'm not too sure, so I'm just gonna do it anyway. So one, two, three, and four, and the rest we can route like I showed you, and I will, I will show you how I did it. And then we're gonna work on putting on our squid plate. And after that, put in our exhaust bolt and we are done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I lied. There are actually four hoses that need to be capped off. I'm trying to see if you can get a better, man, the lighting is not good here. Um, there are four total right here. So there's, I'm trying to get away to see. If, yeah, there you go. Now you have a shot of all four. One, two, three, and four. They're all in sequence here. I capped them off with the blue ones from AutoZone. I can also put those parts in the description. And then there's the one under this butterfly valve here, all completely capped off now. Now our last step, or our last two steps are to put the squid plate on after we clean it into this spot here. And then we're gonna throw the exhaust bolt on, like I said, and that should be it. So we are just hand threading in our new exhaust bolt here. And uh, just so I don't forget, it goes in really smooth. Nothing like OEM bolts. Um, this bolt was like $10, <laughs> but um, hey, if it works, it works. And it's really hard to find a bolt in that size. If you know anything or have a hardware store that works with you, then you should be fine. But um, these size bolts with the same thread pitch and everything just like that is it's really hard to find. So use OEM while you still can. That's in there. We're gonna tighten it up and we're gonna call this side done. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to clean off the surface where this squid plate is gonna go. I already did so. Um, I used a little bit of an abrasive pad as well as some brake cleaner, uh, or some carb cleaner, just making sure all the remnants are off. I did cover up the hole because you don't want any debris getting in there. That's not good. Um, so you take this, um, it comes with new hardware. Make sure you get the one with the hardware because the original stuff is too long and you're gonna to have to find spacer or uh, washers or get smaller hardware. So make sure you get the kit with the hardware. It's save you some time um, and money actually. So. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the uh, gray RTV that I purchased uh, and we are going to line it around the bolts like this and we're going to line it around the gasket 
and do both sides of it. Uh, some people do one, some people don't even use the gasket. They just, they just RTV the plate onto there. Totally up to you. Um, I'm not too sure. So, I mean, I can always take it off um, and just use the plate, no gasket. So I'm gonna try it with both sides of the gasket with RTV. Um, and then we're gonna put it down. Worst case, like I said, if it's getting any sort of vacuum leaks, I'll just pull it off and I'll just RTV the plate itself on there. So for now, we're just gonna do both sides. Um, it's gonna be really difficult for me to show you while I'm doing that because it dries pretty quick. But yeah, um, tighten your bolts in a sequence. Don't fully torque them all at once so the RTV can sit even. Then once it's fully pressured down and you're tor torquing your way around in a circle, finally, you can actually torque it down. Let this sit, let this dry for like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, I believe the full cure time is longer, but um, let it dry before you try to start the car. Um, and then we'll, I'll get back to you when we have this together. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I put the squid plate in. It's really hard to see at this angle. Uh, there you go. Put the squid plate in. There's a lot of RTV on the side. Um, that was my doing. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge. These two bolts and now you can use a socket for, uh, but this one, unless you have a really tiny socket, can't really use it. So, oops, dropping wrenches. Uh, I had to use a 13 mil open ended, super easy to use. Um, pop it in there now. We have to let it sit um, and cure. So that way it's fully sealed. Now we can do my very last thing, which is my coolant temp sensor. Um, like I said, I did have a new one. Uh, replaced but it wasn't oem because i didn't know they had oem ones so we're gonna do that um let's jump into that and before i forget this is the long hose that i was telling you about we're going to run this into the fuel pressure regulator vacuum port here if i can find it all right so we're gonna run that in there make sure it's fully good and sealed and then what we're gonna do with this is run it straight into this little port here on the intake manifold that way we still have vacuum to our fuel pressure regulator then we put our brake booster vacuum line back on and now we can put the clip back on but basically we followed our checklist the only three vacuum lines we need are the fuel pressure regulator the iacv and the brake booster so that leaves our vacuum lines done now we can get back to this now there's no real fun way to do this sensor, um, but it is this one right here that I'm pointing to, this guy. Um, you have to pull the sensor off. Um, it looks like this, so that way you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, you pull the sensor off and this is a 19 millimeter um, nut here on the end and you pull it out and put it back in. Um, ideally you'd wanna drain the coolant um, or maybe not drain it, but at least bleed it. Um, and I know I'm probably gonna get roasted in the comments for that, but I did last time. I, uh, I put a bunch of towels under there. I popped it off real quick, threaded the new one in, stopped the leak. Um, I'm sure I'm introducing air into the system. I'm sure it needs to be bled. I will do it eventually. Um, if I'm having sort of any sort of issues, I will check on it. Um, but for now, we're just gonna do it. So let's do that. All right, so I got the sensor all loosened up and it's actually off. It's spinning by hand now. I um, mean, we're dripping coolant. So I'm gonna get my other hand ready. I'm gonna throw that sensor in as soon as I get, try to minimize the um, amount of coolant coming out. So let me get back to you. All right, so I did get it all locked in here. Um, I made a mess. I lost a lot of coolant, so I'm gonna have to top off um, and bleed it, but that's okay. So we're gonna plug it back in. You take your retainer clip here, put it back together, and we're gonna call that done. And some of you guys may be wondering why I decided to go with a new coolant temp sensor, um, and for a couple of reasons. I mean, you can never go wrong with new parts. That's always a good thing. I um, mean, you should replace sensors pretty frequently. I don't want to say frequently, but often enough to where you know they're not going to fail. Um, and two, because it's an OEM part and I didn't have an OEM part. But three, most importantly, in my opinion, is people claim that when you delete the EGR, the engine runs a little bit hotter. Um, not really sure the science behind it. I'm not too smart on all that, but um, I've read about it and I've heard multiple people say it. So what better reason to have a a good proper OEM brand new working temp sensor to let me know if I'm going above or too or you know too high too low whatever it is um, I'd like to know so that's why I did that um, you don't have to but that's why I went ahead and did that with everything all buttoned up um, I could probably get away with starting it right now um, and it should be okay but I'm gonna let that RTV really just cure dry up make sure it's all good i don't want any of that being sucked in through so i'm just going to wait on it let it cure for a little bit and i'll come back out here and give it a test start hopefully fingers crossed this fixes my issue and hopefully fingers crossed i don't have any other issues uh, because this car is one endless cycle of fixing one thing to the next so let's give it a little bit i'll come back and let's try to start this thing 
All right, it's time to try the first start. I'm gonna have Deanna film and let's see how this goes. All right, go ahead. All right, doesn't sound too bad. We're gonna let this thing warm up, see if the issue goes away. Right, I'll get back to you. ladies and gentlemen so the car actually idled decent for for uh what it was um it's about the same kind of but a little bit better um didn't have as much i don't know i, I don't know what you want to call it misfiring um then we let it get up to temp and it started to misfire again um no leaks no vacuum leaks so the egr the thing is complete so uh, hopefully that helps you guys um didn't really fix my issue unfortunately i'm still stuck uh, in this never-ending cycle and man I tell you, I'm running out of ideas. I know I said that last video or maybe even the video before, but uh, this was my last resort, this EGR thing. Um, I didn't want to do it at first, but I did. And I mean, I'm glad I did. It's something to get out of the way. And there's a lot of problems that I found already with it, but it didn't fix my issue. So on to the next thing. If you guys have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, I appreciate every comment, every like. Uh, share the video if you can, please, with your friends. If they know anything about it, maybe they can help me or maybe help my channel grow. So I uh, appreciate it. Like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.